China data, but was it a little bit overdone or you think cause for concern? Of course, these numbers aren't taken in isolation by the market, but what the market's looking for is a trend in the numbers. Overall, that trade surplus is a positive for GDP overall, but the fact that the domestic economy in China is deteriorating at a much faster pace than anticipated means that other components of GDP will be much weaker. So altogether, a net negative in terms of implications for the growth numbers coming out of China. We have a look at the trends in terms of imports and exports. Both have been deteriorating, but what we are seeing uh, uh, is the import side deteriorating much more quickly than the export side is. The export side, we are seeing weakness uh, in terms of European markets, in flat, fact, quite flat demand coming through. And it's actually emerging market demand, which is ho holding up this export number. But on the import side, really showing that domestic demand in China is softening at a much quicker pace than what the markets anticipated. Of course, we saw the inflation numbers out of China yesterday at 2.2%. It does demonstrate that China does have the ability to further cut interest rates. And that's really what's expected now uh, for uh, by China uh, because of the softer numbers coming through. But with that surprise interest rate cut uh, last week, the market's now going to be wondering what the second quarter GDP numbers look like. The consensus is 7.5%. These numbers are due out on Friday. Of course, if we do see a weaker number, a sub-7% uh, growth level in China is considered a hard landing. In terms of um, Julia, the, the expectations of further interest rate cuts, easing stimulus, uh, I mean, how much of an impact will that have? If you look at these numbers, it suggests in the past it maybe hasn't had all that much of an impact, particularly if you look at that weak domestic import scene. It's a bit of a balancing act by China because, of course, we saw that massive stimulus package in 2008 which created huge asset bubbles, especially in the property space. And what the Chinese government wouldn't want to do now is cause the same uh, mal-alignment of capital. So looking at, uh, I guess, not causing any bubbles, especially in that property space, but at the same time we are seeing a deepening in that softening of domestic demand. So more interest rate cuts expected. We saw one last week. Of course, the impact on the Australian market has been a negative one. We saw the Aussie market down by half a percent today. 3.2 billion traders, so just a little bit more than when Michael looked at the numbers. It's the first session in four sessions where we've cracked that $3 billion mark. So extremely soft once again, but a good day for the uh, bear fund to launch. Beta shares launching a bear fund which has a negative correlation with the benchmark ASX 200 index, and you can trade it on the ASX. The code is BEAR. The first day of trading, of course, that was up by 0.6 percent, considering the negative correlation with the Aussie market. If we have a look at some of the stocks that reach 52-week highs and 52-week lows, it's also interesting and it gives us an insight into where traders and investors may be putting their money at the moment. Making 52-week lows today, we saw stocks like Aquarius Platinum, Aquila Resources and Illumina, all mining stocks, as well as CSR and Seven West Media. So I guess uh, the market's still betting away from some of these uh, higher risk uh, mining companies, as well as some of those companies which have been cyclically hurt. Uh, but if we have a look at those stocks making 52-week highs today, all of them are pretty much defensive stocks. We saw Automotive Holdings, we also saw Credit Corp, um, Ramsey Healthcare, Telstra, we saw Spotless Group, Tattersalls, all hitting a 52-week high. So there are a number of companies doing well on the ASX and they're all in those defensive sectors. Highs, as Michael said, but still pretty elevated levels at $3.81 if we're just looking at that 12-month uh, that chart. I'm hearing price targets uh, well over $4 potentially in the, uh, in the near term for Telstra. It's a sign of the times when you see like a stock like Telstra, one of the best performers on the market, up 26% in the last year. And once you include the dividends and the franking credits involved in this stock, up by 34%. Telstra's going to be a stock very much in favour as long as we see the ASX 200 closer to the 4,000 level rather than the 5,000 level. And as long as you continue to see those interest rates drop off in Australia, it becomes um, an attractive investment for those income seekers when we, you are starting to see those cash rates come off. So as long as as you see continued weakness in the Aussie market and the index closer to four rather than five, you are going to see Telstra very much in favour and the likes of Coca-Cola Amatel. This is a stock that we've seen reach an all-time record high in the last month. So we are seeing those defensives very much in favour. Ramsey Healthcare, another stock reaching a 52-week high. But if the market starts to rally and starts to rally hard, well, these are the stocks that are going to be left behind. So really a sign of the type of market that defensives are very much in favour, but you want to be able to switch into the higher growth areas once we see a sustained rally on the Aussie market.